I gotta admit it, I never in my wildest dreams imagined the decentralized exchanges would be ready for adoption so quickly. And yet, here we are. Uniswap has become a mammoth site in just a couple of months now. It's now the go-to exchange for new ERC-20 tokens. Those are tokens built on Ethereum, if you didn't know. But it's just getting started. One of the great things about DEXs, which is short for decentralized exchanges, is that they embody decentralization and everything good about crypto. We all share and make money with no corporate fat cats sitting at the top of the pyramid. Today, we're going to examine Uniswap to see how it has blown up so quickly, and I'm going to be giving you guys a full tutorial on how to use it at the end. Because if you don't learn now, it may be too late by the time you figure it out for the big gains. Let's get it. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, the hardest working channel in all of cryptocurrency. If you're new, hit that subscribe button and join both my Telegram groups to learn more about crypto or to connect with me in the Bit Squad. All right, guys, today we are talking about one of the most popular platforms in the emerging world of DeFi, Uniswap. It didn't even exist in 2017, but in 2020, it's shining bright with DeFi Spotlight on it. DEXs were what really kicked off the DeFi movement by removing centralized exchanges as the middlemen in transactions and trades, allowing people to trade without giving custodial access to their funds to any centralized party, not your keys, not your crypto. In other words, you can make a transaction without risking the safety of your stack. 2017, either Delta was the king of DEXs, which was crazy because it sucks. Being crowned by dominating the share of the DEX market volume, either Delta used an off-chain order book broadcasting match transactions on-chain. Yeah, try to explain to somebody how to use Ether Delta. It's very difficult. Either Delta's founder ran into some trouble, though, with the SEC and decided to sell the company to investors in China because they buy everything. But they then conducted their own ICO before essentially exit scamming the ICO investors. It's not even around anymore. 2018, IDEX took the scene, overtaking the vast majority of DEX volume. As market cycles reported, IDEX was responsible for nearly 95% of all DEX trades for a sustained period of time. Then, in September 2019, IDEX finally jumped off the radar, going from 63% to 29% market share in the span of a week. It never recovered, averaging between 8 to 14% of DEX market share. Bancor a thorn in my side, also came to the scene in 2017, but had not gained much traction until 2020. Bangor held its ICO in mid-2017, raising over $150 million in a mere three-hour time frame. Bangor was actually the first DEX that used an automated market maker through smart contracts, doing away with order books and replacing them with on-chain liquidity pools for non-custodial token swaps. While Bancor didn't gain much traction in terms of adoption and volume following its ICO, 2020 seems to be the year of DeFi, and Bancor is finally getting the attention it deserves for innovating the space by being the first to implement a liquidity pool mechanism. In the past three months, its native token, BNT, is up over 1,000%. Now, while it does a lot of good stuff, definitely Bancor has some problems filling orders from time to time. Sometimes you don't even know if they go through or not. But the advantage of liquidity pools, however, traditional order books, is that there doesn't need to be constant active trading to maintain liquidity. Liquidity providers, typically whales, can stake liquidity to earn a proportional share of trading fees and walk away, knowing that their liquidity is in the pool and it is working for them, does not need to be maintained. This not only benefits liquidity providers with the potential for yield farming, but allows purchasers of coins with low liquidity on order books to be able to make small to medium-sized purchases without causing a large fluctuation in the price. That's what happened with a thin order book, and we all love that. Nobody wants to be dumped on. Instead of an order book whose sell and buy walls need to be maintained, an automated market maker, or AMM, protocol is used where a liquidity pool is automatically maintained in a smart contract, with the price being the result of the ratio between two coins. Bancor pairs its native token, BNT, with other coins and its liquidity pools. Using Bancor token as the hub currency instead of Ether, as it is seen to have a big flaw by many. Kyber also came in 2017, a decentralized swap platform that did away with order book for an on-chain liquidity protocol. As with Bancor, it has its own token, KNC, that is integral to its on-chain liquidity, and it was not until 2020 that it began to really make waves, being part of the explosion of the DeFi space. But now, 
today. Uniswap has the crown. For how long, we don't know. But it was a late mover to the DEX scene, not even existing prior to November of 2018. So why and how has Uniswap emerged to become the leader in DEX volume? What makes Uniswap so special? Well, that's a complicated question, but there's a lot of answers. For starters, it is an anomaly in the DEX space in that its liquidity pools are paired with ETH instead of using a native token as its hub currency, at least for now. This makes liquidity staking more stable and less dependent on the success and performance of a token exclusive to only one DeFi platform. If you stake liquidity on Uniswap, your liquidity pool's value isn't partially tied to the success of Uniswap, but only to the success of either and the paired ERC-20 token. Even if a coin has low volume on the platform, if the price fluctuates in the general market, a profitable arbitrage opportunity opens up, keeping the Uniswap price consistent with the general market. This liquidity pool mechanism also virtually guarantees liquidity even for small market cap coins, making Uniswap popular for buying and selling coins that have low liquidity on other exchanges. That's one reason why we really love to use it because it's got so many small coins you have to be careful, there could be a lot of scams there. Well, there definitely are, so be careful. Danger Zhang reports in his Medium article titled Uniswap Isn't Your Ordinary Dex that Uniswap has its code open sourced in an open PI. Any third party can build on top of that exchange, create liquidity pools, or even create their own interface to their exchange, just like we've seen Unicrypt has done. We recently covered them on a video. Transactions cannot be censored, and the exchange cannot be shut down. That's very valuable. Because of all this, many say that Uniswap is actually the most decentralized exchange out there. And yes, there is a degree of centralization even to decentralized exchanges. Uniswap's code is the proverbial genie let out of the bottle. And as long as DEXs employing automatic market making protocols and liquidity pools are to be used, most likely so is Uniswap. The Uniswap platform has a user interface that is similar to its smart contracts in that it is minimalistic, sleek, and elegant. Because of the liquidity advantage for trading coins with little liquidity on order books, many up-and-coming low market cap coins have used Uniswap to their advantage. And so can you by discovering and collecting diamonds in the rough that have liquidity on the platform. As this hippo run starts to roar, I believe many tokens which are primarily traded on Uniswap will end up becoming popular on larger centralized exchanges using Uniswap as a stepping stone to gain trading volume and momentum in price action. So that's enough talking about Uniswap and the evolution of DEXs. Let's check out how to use it with this tutorial. Okay, so here we are at uniswap.org. You're gonna wanna click launch app. Uh, I think there's a mobile app, I've never used it. I may be using that in the future, may do another tutorial on it. So Uniswap is very easy. Now, sometimes you will find this embedded on a different website and that is okay as long as it's still running through Uniswap uh, because it, like PAMP, for instance, has this directly on their website, uh, so you could use it there, or you could come over here to app.uniswap.org. So let's kind of look at the screen here. So you got a few different options. You have swap, and then you have pool. This is a liquidity pool. This is where you can actually add some of your coins for liquidity. You can stake them, and you can make some money on the fees that happen. So then we're going to go back here to swap. Uh, before we get too much right here, let's move up here to the top right. Uh, this is where you're going to have your MetaMask enabled. This is my Meta, you know, my MetaMask address that I have connected right now at the moment. It's going to show me how much Ethereum I have. I don't think it's going to show tokens or add that in. It's just going to show direct Ethereum. You have version 2 and version 1. Uh, if I've had problems with coins on version 2, which is the newer updated version of the protocol, then I, I just have not had any better results on version 1. So the long and short of it is there's no reason to use version one. Just use version two, uh, no problem. You have these settings right here. Now, this is going to be transaction settings. This is going to show slipping tolerance. If you click here on the question mark, it shows what this is. Your transaction will revert if the price changes unfavorably by more than this percentage. So this would be during the transaction how much the cost slips. You can set it at 0.1%. You can set it at 0.5%, you can set it at 1%, or you can set a custom amount. Now, for some projects, they actually require slippage, like PAMP. 
you have to pay an 8 to 10% slippage to sell because with PAMP, that's kind of like their thing, right? They don't want you to sell, so they incentivize you not to by charging you, you know, what equates to slippage. So um, they have a transaction deadline here. Okay, your transaction will revert if it is pending for more than this long. Uh, I like to keep this pretty low. Uh, sometimes I'll put it on 10 minutes. Uh, really, if your transaction doesn't go through by five minutes, it's probably not going through. Um, then, of course, you have the options to ex uh, toggle expert mode. What expert mode is going to do is it's going to allow you to just click the transaction, push the transaction through without any concern for the slippage. Look, I've taken up to 50% slippage before if I thought I was getting in the thing at just the right time and I would make the money back quicker. And that's happened a few times. Um, I don't like to do any more than 5% slippage. So if I'm going to spend a lot of time buying or selling something, I'm going to buy and sell in small amounts. Uh, but sometimes, you know, if you know something's about to crash or you know something's about to go up, huge news is out, you're the first person to find it, then in that case, you may want to go ahead and use higher slippage. Uh, so... Here it says, expert mode turns off the confirmed transaction prompt and allows high slippage trades that often results in bad rates and lost funds. Only use this mode if you know what you're doing. So you can turn on expert mode and then the screen isn't gonna really look much different. It's just not gonna have a prompt when you actually do the transaction. Uh, so over here, then you have dark mode. I mean, my eyes, oh gosh. I, I, dark mode, guys. I made my kids promise me last night they'll never use anything on light mode day mode it's terrible so okay here we go you can click the ellipsis over here you can see about docs code the discord for uniswap and analytics on the site none of that's really relevant uh unless you're just trying to do some kind of research on uniswap itself so here we go this is how you make a trade on uniswap you connect your metamask okay now when you click it okay you're gonna have to make sure that up here it says connected uh, sometimes it'll say not connected, okay? Now, also, uh, if you do a transaction here, uh, this little bar up here, which we'll look at in a second, is going to say pending. However, if you click off of this site without canceling the pending transaction, one thing I found is I had a hidden transaction that was causing my MetaMask not to work at all. And this was here on activity, okay? So here on activity, if you have any pending transactions, that look like they're not going through or your metamask isn't working go through your activity here which i don't have any activity this is just a dummy wallet to show you guys this uh but usually all your transactions will show up and if there's one pending uh you can cancel it so i found once i found the uh transaction that was still pending for a long time and canceled it suddenly everything started coming through and everything was working so that's one thing you may run into so here we go uh, i don't have a lot of ethereum in here so we're going to click mask we're going to select a token uh let's say we wanted to move it over to wrapped ethereum okay you hit max it's going to show you how much you're going to get uh with the transaction uh let's pick a different coin though that is going to probably have some slippage edi loves slippage so here we go such a small amount not really that big of a deal slippage is 0.04 percent uh if it goes above five percent this will show uh, red or orange uh, depending on how high it goes so if you want to buy some EDI here we go we got the ethereum in here you would basically just hit swap now if there was a coin that you needed to add that you couldn't find you could simply type the token contract address right here in search name or paste address and it will come up now if you do that uh, it will also bring up the option for you to um, it'll bring up the option for you to add that to your selected coins on Uniswap. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna click add to add that new coin here on the list, and then you're gonna click on it, and once you do that, then it'll show up right here. That might be a little confusing, but can't really think of a coin offhand to show you that example with. So here we go. Now also, if you want to trade uh, the slots here, so if you wanna sell EDI instead of buy it, you just click this blue arrow here, boom, and there you go. Uh, then you'd hit max. I don't have any of this, so it'll go to zero. So, okay, so let's go ahead and buy our max amount of EDI. Now, one thing is you never want to sell all of your Ethereum. Why do you think that is? I'll let you answer out loud. That's right, it's the gas. So you're always gonna wanna leave a little bit of Ethereum. I may not actually have enough in here to do this transaction. I think I probably do. 
Uh, so, so you always want to leave a little bit. So I'm going to take these decimals off here, okay? And we are going to hit swap, okay? Now, we look at our slippage. Make sure you look at your slippage. Then you hit confirm swap. Okay, so once it's confirming, you'll get a pop-up, okay? So this pop-up is going to have a couple different things. You're going to have to confirm it in your MetaMask, okay? Uh, usually it's going to pop up just on the right side. I don't know why it popped up a brand new giant window. Maybe because I got it on full screen. But anyways, this is what you want to do. I always edit the gas, hit it, uh, hit first, or fast, excuse me. Always hit fast. This is going to make your transaction go through much faster. We're talking a couple of bucks here, guys. I want, my, I want to know that my transactions go through. I don't want to have to wait 10 minutes for it. So if you want to do average, you see you save, you're saving 2 bucks and 19 cents. If you can't spare the extra $2 and 19 cents for a transaction, then you may want to consider whether or not crypto is for you. I always want my transactions to go through the very, very fastest. However, right now, I don't have this much in this account right here. So um, I'm going to use slow here just for the purpose of this video, but I always use fast. I know I said, basically, if you're poor, don't be in crypto, and then I don't have enough money to do this transaction. I hope you guys appreciate that irony. So here we go. I'm going to hit save, and then I'm going to hit confirm. Okay. And then it's going to take me back here. Transaction is submitted. Now, when I click off the transaction, you can see up here, you can see two pending transactions. If you click on those, you will see that this swap tried to go through twice. Now, if you get these pending transactions, you can actually clear them by clicking clear all. And now the transactions haven't gone through and now they will not go through. They will disappear. This is the situation where I was talking about where sometimes you may have to go up here to the MetaMask and go through the activity and make sure they get canceled. Okay, so um, it's going to charge me a little bit of a gas cancellation fee, as you guys can see there. Um, and then once again, all these are going to get canceled. I'm going to hit cancel. Yes, let's try. Cancel it. Blah, 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 blah. So now these transactions are canceled and nothing got sent. So make sure you do this because what happened is, is when if, if you watch my video tomorrow, I'm going to explain how I lost a bunch of money because I sent a, I sent a bunch of small love potion to the wrong token or to the wrong address so watch that video tomorrow when i you'll understand this tomorrow after you watch the video basically i sent this to the wrong address and i didn't get up here and cancel it fast enough the transaction ended up going through so i ended up sending it to the wrong address and basically lost a bunch of money so just be careful when you're doing this be careful when you're using uh, metamask whenever you're transacting make sure that you are you know sending things to the right address and just be careful remember with uniswap it's brand new so there's a lot of different things that you're going to need to be careful of. Make sure you're putting the right token contract address. Make sure you're verifying it's the right one through CoinGecko or Etherscan because you don't want to get scammed. This is a new platform, which means it can be dangerous, but it also means with high risk can come high rewards. So you guys remember that. But now it's your turn. What do you think about Uniswap? Are you enjoying using it or do you wish it were easier? But remember, the harder it is, the earlier you are. Make sure to drop your comments down below. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe to become a member of the Bit Squad. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day. Good boy out.